there's one person on this planet who's been given the responsibility of keeping you together. Just one. And so if you're not doing it, it's not going to get done. It's nobody else's responsibility. People pay us to compress their time. It's like, I want to do this. You've done this. Help me get there faster, right? And that's a huge part of coaching and consulting. So how are you showing up and doing that for them? But but it is an integrity issue, and it's going to come to head as our industry grows, right? And more and more people are becoming coaches and consultants. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Vixen Voice. So I have an expert crew for you today, and they are veterans of The Vixen Voice. We have Dana Skaggs joining us again. If you'll remember, Dana is the queen of boundaries, so we'll talk a little bit about that today, but we're going to be talking more about her role as a therapist. And she has a master's in clinical psychology, and she's a licensed psychotherapist in the state of Tennessee. And we also have Sylvia Worsham, who has been a frequent flyer on the Vixen Voice. So Sylvia, thank you for your time again. And I actually had the pleasure of being on her podcast recently, so we'll chat about that. And Sylvia is founder of Sylvia Worsham Coaching, and she is a spiritual transformational coach. So what we're chatting with you today about is the difference between therapy, coaching, consulting, and potentially spiritual healing. We might get into that as well. So unfortunately, our advanced spiritual healer came down with COVID, but as you know, I practice spiritual healing as well. So I may wear two hats, but we'll see where the conversation goes. So I want to thank Sylvia for bringing this topic up. She has a friend who's a therapist and they were having a conversation because there tends to be right now this tension going on with like what therapy and what's coaching and which do you need and who gets the client and you know Dana and Sylvia and I really agree it's collaboration over competition mm -hmm. that if you're a client of ours and you need help like we want you to get the help you need mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. so but you know this conversation really spurred for me this understanding that gosh I wonder if some women are confused they're like you know I need a guide for this but I'm not sure what type of guide I need and I'm a big fan of following your intuition if suddenly you wake up and hear someone and say wow i need a spiritual healer you're probably being guided to get a spiritual healer and if you wake up and say wow i need a therapist to listen to this problem you're probably being guided to get a therapist <laughs> and if you see some ad or hear a coach speaking somewhere and you think wow i need a life coach or a business coach or a consultant you probably need it. So, you know, first and foremost, trust your gut. Second of all, remember, they're not mutually exclusive, right? Meaning, you know, I just, I was sharing with the ladies, I was watching Owning Manhattan over the holiday weekend. Like, yes, I was Netflixing. So <laughs> with my mom and, you know, one of the realtors there, she was like, it really does take a village. I have an astrologer, a spiritual healer, a therapist, a child wound therapist, you know, and just like this whole <laughs> slew of people that she works with. So, you know, I, I definitely say in today's world, we want to be smart with where our money goes. So follow your gut. But today we're going to do our best to kind of talk about some of the differences in what we do and some of the similarities. So maybe this will help guide you to what's the best solution for you. And, you know, Dana and Sylvia, I think you'd agree with me, but I can tell you this, if you ever have a call with me and I feel there's a better coach for you, I'm sending you to them right? Because we really do want the best and same in spiritual healing. I mean, I have a whole family of spiritual healers. Sylvia knows she's had a healing with me. She's had a healing with a friend of mine. If you want guidance, we're here to guide, right? So I, I'm actually 
very grateful to be able to live my life this way, having been a lawyer and a financial advisor in my past life, which tend to be very competitive industries. And I love that we're in a collaborative service-based industry. So I'm going to kind of open the floor up to Dana and Sylvia. Like, what are your initial thoughts when we think about this? Have you ever come across this with a client where they weren't quite sure what they needed? When they usually, when they come to see me, they're looking for a therapist and that's mm-hmm. that's who they're pursuing as you were talking i i was thinking about i know because i was doing some research and and i know that in in my field psychology in particular but in you know licensed therapist research is kind of a, a big deal they do a lot of it especially yeah. psychology and it's interesting that one of the one of the research findings that they came up with was that more so than the education or the experience of the therapist, what made the hugest impact on the efficacy of therapy was the relationship between yeah, the therapist and the client. And so that's been proven through research. And as I'm listening to you talk and I'm thinking about Sylvia and I'm thinking about the other people that we know and, and all, us all trying to love each other and collaborate with one another, It's just like, I think finding the person that best resonates with you, because even in, even just in each one of our areas, you could find somebody that's coming to you for some type of coaching or some type of consulting. And you just don't, you just don't fit for whatever reason. And then you would respect that and you would find someone say, you know what, I think I know the exact person that's perfect for you. I know I've done that in therapy. Sometimes you get somebody and you're, you're trying your best, but there's, you're just not quite jiving. And to do the best service for the client is to make sure that if, if you're not clicking, if you're not resonating, that you find someone that they do resonate with. And I, that was mm-hmm. just coming to my mind as I was listening to you describe that. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, it's obviously different in psychology, but, you know, there's this big thing in the coaching world about guarantees. Like, what's the guarantee if I buy these hours with you or this package or if I enter into your mastermind? And I feel this whole conversation is a waste of energy. Like, if I'm not bringing value to you, I'm not going to hold you to a contract. Does that make sense? Like, I just think it's, it's, it's a little crazy. It's always like, oh, what's my guarantee here? What guarantee am I putting on here? here's what I'm going to guarantee. If I'm not bringing you value, I'm going to let you out and give you the rest of your money back. Like, that's just how I feel. Because to your point, like, you know, why, why try to force something that's not working? And, you know, luckily, I haven't had that situation to date. But, you know, as you grow, you're going to have it at some point. And I had a recent situation with a client I'd like to share. But Sylvia, I want to hear from you first. What are you what thoughts came up for you as I was doing the introduction? Or feelings? For me, it does have to do with relationship, uh, whether you're in therapy or being consulted or uh, being a coach to that person. If they don't jive with you, they're not going to work with you. And if they don't work with you, both in therapy and in coaching, they're not going to gain the value that we can bring them. That's going to be part of the issue. And that's why the relationship really needs to be established. Like, oh, I've been in therapy myself and I've been coached Mm -hmm. and they're totally different disciplines and they come at different times in life. And if I'm dealing with something like, for example, my grief journey right now with my father, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a therapist because a lot of what I encountered could be PTSD down the road and a coach is not going to have the training to be able to handle PTSD versus a therapist that is highly trained and certified in this area. But if I want to deal with mindset shifts, boundaries, anything along that line that's not trauma related, then coaching is definitely um, a plus, right? Because it deals with the present moment and habits, Mm -hmm. right? So habits, mindset shifts, anything along those lines is very much a coach that can help you with that. But if it's anything deeper in trauma, then I that's where I say, no, I'm not certified in this arena. And I'm going to refer to a therapist that not only has the training, but then if you then if you have the relationship with that person, then that's your therapist, right? I mean, and if they're not, then 
you'll be able to refer them to who, who can have a relationship with them. That's what came up. Yeah, and you meant... And you mentioned trauma and you know what I was what I was taught in my certification is coaching is a forward based practice, right? Like we're future forward in coaching, which I like that you use present moment, like what's going on with you presently and how do we want to change for the future? Whereas when we think about trauma, that's usually something from the past, right? I mean, you're removing it now or working on it now. So I think that's kind of one way to think about it. But Dana, what would you say? Because well, here's the interesting thing. You coach <laughs> I'm gonna have to and insert. your therapist. I know, please. That's why we're having the I'm conversation. I'm going to have to insert to this. Yeah, because I had a, a patient that gave me something, uh, a, a little plaque years and years ago. It said, don't stumble over something behind you. So yes. something I find myself dealing with when I'm working with my patients or my clients, of course, you know, we're, we are, I'm always moving forward. We set goals. Mm -hmm. Like I would ask them, I said, we're going to do goal formation. And this is a question I want you to think about. How will you be different whenever you can say, I don't need to keep coming here. I don't need to keep coming to therapy. And so then I take what they say, we break it down into small bite-sized pieces that we measure, that we are, we are going to then remeasure. And so it is a moving forward goal goal focus, solution focus, where are we going from here? Why are you here? Why are you willing to spend your precious time, money, and effort to sit here with me? Where are you wanting to go that you're not right now? The thing of it is, especially I find myself when I'm working with boundaries with people, when they have trouble setting a boundary, the question is, why? Why are you having trouble setting this boundary? And almost always, it's because of something that happened to them in the past. It's some experience that they had. They're stuck, exactly. There's some mm -hmm. lesson they learned. There's some narrative that they created that we have to go back and dismantle. We can deconstruct it, question it, challenge it, and then rebuild it so they can then go forward and set healthy boundaries. And so I very much see it as a weaving back and forth between mm -hmm. where are we wanting to go oh and when God. we get stuck on something, asking the question why and it, it harkens back to something that happened to them 10 years ago then we weave back and go okay let's examine that for a moment let's dismantle that look challenge that and then once we get that straightened around okay now let's weave back into the future and see if mm -hmm. we can continue to go forward with that so that's how kind of what i do with my patients and clients and how i kind of see that working i love it no, I would totally agree. I didn't, and, and, and I agree with you. I think it was just more, you know, future looking and coaching that we don't necessarily look at the past. Like we're not trying to figure out why something is the way it is. It's just like, hey, how are we dealing with this now? And you know, wh where are we going in the future? I absolutely love that you set goals with your clients. I mean, is mm -hmm. this a common Every practice? Time. Yeah, in therapy, because I really, I, I, I did go through therapy. I, when I was going through my divorce, I loved my psychologist, but I don't think I've ever heard of this goal setting and therapy. Is this common practice? I, I don't know how to answer that, except that it seems that there is a group of therapists out mm -hmm. there that they kind of pat you on the shoulder and go, Oh, bless. That's mm -hmm. so sad. I'm so sorry. Now, this gets to my personality on some level, but I don't see the point in that. Now, mm -hmm. I see the point in being compassionate and empathetic and understanding mm -hmm. and providing comfort. Absolutely. But I'm not going to pat somebody on the back and go, oh, bless your heart. What good does that do? That is no good. So finding a goal and asking them, okay, look, you're here. Why? Why? You're here rather than someplace else. And so from what I understand... Goal setting isn't necessarily always done in therapy because some people do the Freudian where you're just kind of in the moment, you're in the gestalt, you're in the moment. There's no goal setting. It's just you're just in the moment. And But I work, I weave that in too, depending on what's needed at, at the moment. We'll do like empty chair. We'll, we'll write letters to, to past people that they have had. They're kind of stuck. They have an issue with and they've never really, mm -hmm. they've never processed it. And so we'll have a moment where we put that person in the, in the chair in front of them and we'll kind of be that gestalt moment, right? With, right, sit there with their feelings and that kind of stuff. But in my mind, I see that that's all about, though, where are we going with this? 
Mm-hmm. If I don't have goals with a with a patient, I don't know where we're headed. I don't know why. Wh- what do we need to? You know, it's sort of. I, I tell my patients it's kind of like when you're playing golf, and you can have a, a golf bag full of golf clubs, but if you don't know where the hole is, you don't know which club to pick out of your bag. Mm-hmm. You have to know what's the goal. Where, where am I wanting to go? And once I know where my patient wants to go, then I know what, what club to pick out of the bag. But it's up to them to decide what those goals are. It's not my decision to make. I love I it. I could- love that you're goal setting and I love that you're in my state because if I feel I need therapy again, I'm calling you because I want someone <laughs> moving me forward. <laughs> So I love it. We, we, we can zoom. Awesome. So Sylvia, a question I have for you and feel free to comment on anything Dana said as well is, you know, when you start saying you're a spiritual transformation coach, which I know you are, and I know exactly the work you do and the women you work with. Right. But again, we're talking about the audience, how things can get confusing, right? Like how does this differ from spiritual healing, which is on the rise now, spiritual coaching and spiritual healing, right? But if someone came to you, because I do spiritual coaching and spiritual healing, so I know the difference to me, but do you ever get that confusion when you're talking with potential clients? Yes and no. And and where it gets confusing is because they view religion very differently. And we have to have that yeah. religion versus faith conversation. Yep. Whereas I ask them, what relationship do you have with your higher source of power? Is it God? Where are you in your journey? And mm-hmm. this is where, when Dana was talking earlier about weaving back and forth, we can, we have to kind of weave a little bit into the past because a, a lot of where their relationship comes from or lack thereof comes from their past experiences. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. That's where we can start Uh, in coaching. We deal a lot with belief systems and those belief systems are what drive um, our actions or reactions in life and our results ultimately, right? So when we are guiding them, it's, it's to understand where they are in their journey. Do they have a relationship? And if they don't, where, where can we start? Because the kind of work I do, I kind of take them through a journey out of their fear mm-hmm. into their joy and ultimately into total surrender to God. But that takes mm-hmm. time. <laughs> that takes a little bit of time because sometimes there's layers of fear that are covering mm-hmm. their relationship with, with God. And, mm-hmm. and I need to understand where, you know, what is driving that relationship. And, and once I understand that, then we can start working with what are your goals? Like, can we start moving you into a space of joy and what do we need to do to do that? And so we're very goal oriented in the kind of coaching that we provide. And I, what I find, this is where it gets a little confusing for people. Where do I go to get this level of work? Do I go to a healer? Do I go to a therapist? Do I go to a coach? And that's where I think there's a, a little bit of a, that's where the collaboration can can happen or mm-hmm. that's where the competition sometimes arises right because people overstep their bounds if i find mm-hmm. that in their journey there's like major trauma i'm not going to step in there because ethically i mm-hmm. i won't be able to help that person to the best of my ability that's where i would call a a therapist friend and say hey do you know of anybody who has this type of training or this type of certification to get this person into a better spot. That's where I would kind of gain some understanding from their journey. Love it. Thank you for that. And Dina, you do both coaching and you do therapy. So talk to us about that. Okay. So the therapy, since I'm licensed, that is mm-hmm. only with people who reside in my state. And so, and, and actually, I can be anywhere, but my patient has got to be in the state when mm-hmm. the therapy takes place. That's, that's licensure driven. Mm-hmm. Coaching, because I started learning more and more and experiencing more and more about how impactful boundaries are. 
not only listening to all of the stories that my patients have, but also I have stories of my own. And so I wanted to be able to train more people in how to um, practice healthy boundaries. And when I decided to open up boundaries coaching, see, I can do that with anyone in the entire world. Mm-hmm. And if they're like, oh, I have this issue, it's a boundaries issue, then we can just jump right in and we can, we can talk about that relationship. Okay, why, what, what are the boundary issues and why are we having trouble setting the healthy boundaries here? What, what would the healthy mm-hmm. boundaries be and why are you having trouble setting them? And the answer to that why question becomes very important because then that's how you kind of figure out what, where's the hitch in the get along why what's the issue there so that's that's really that's really a lot of fun to do you know as i was listening to sylvia you you were saying earlier in april as well you know when you're going out and you're trying to find experts in areas i think a lot of us we want to try to find someone who actually knows what they're doing who can Mm -hmm. actually do what they say because we all know that anybody can go out there and say I'm a this or I'm a that, but you have to, you know, it's like, okay, well, Mm -hmm. interesting, but Mm -hmm. the proof is in the pudding, right? And so you can, you can find whether it's someone in therapy that's there, because I know I, I've been to therapy before. I know there's therapists out there that they're they're not that good, to be honest. They're just Mm -hmm. not, they're not great. Let's just be real. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then you can also go to a coach who says, I'm a coach of this or that. And you go to them and you're like, okay, you say you're a coach of this or that, but what's, what's the proof? How do I know yeah. that you're actually doing what you say you're doing? And so I think lots of times the word of mouth is fabulous. And that's why mm-hmm. we're getting out there and, and really, because we're so passionate about what we do. And we're passionate mm-hmm. because we're good at it. And we, we've had an opportunity to practice it. And then, then other people can kind of, you know, come along and we can help them. And then those people go tell other people and yep. the word of mouth really spreads. And so that's what I think really makes the big difference, whether it's in therapy or coaching or consulting or, you know, healing or whatever, it's that word of mouth is really, really a big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, and I totally agree. And, you know, the coaching industry as a whole, I was just at a mastermind the other weekend with a room full of coaches, and there's an integrity issue coming to head because, like you said, lots of people can say they're a coach, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, like, what, what makes you a coach? And it's interesting to me, and, and you're correct, as in any profession, there are good doctors, there are not so good doctors, there are good lawyers, there are not so good lawyers, right? So, mm-hmm. but it's so interesting to hear it from a therapist standpoint because I don't know I always think like they'll just go out of business or something like that but to your point they don't so I think again it's a trust your gut if you don't feel you're getting the value you expected first and foremost you know have a conversation with your service provider whoever if they're a coach consultant therapist healer explain this to them and give them a chance to talk because maybe there's some misunderstanding or misalignment right like so I would always take that first step because I do hold, regardless of someone's qualifications, certifications, et cetera, from what I found, most people in our industries are really there to help people, right? Some Mm -hmm. may be better than others. So give them a chance to have that conversation. I always think that's the better human being thing to do. And then if you don't feel you're getting what you're needing, don't hesitate, move on to the next. Because, you know, I mean, one, you're paying this person, but two, time is money. You're looking to heal or solve a problem or move forward faster. I mean, you know, in that room last week, it was like, hey, people pay pay us to compress their time. It's like, I want to do this. You've done this. Help me get there faster. Right. And that's a huge part of coaching and consulting. Like people are basically paying us to compress their time. So how are you showing up and doing that for them? But, but it is an integrity issue and it's going to come to head as our industry grows. Right. And more and more people are becoming coaches and consultants. So I totally agree with you with the word of mouth and And, you know, if you're listening and you're a coach or a consultant, like let your clients know you're open for business. Sometimes they don't know that you have room for other clients. I know on the consulting side, I only take five clients at a time, right? So I'm not always open to take on new consulting clients, but when you are, 
tell your clients because if your clients love you, they want you to help their friends too, right? So don't be shy about this. Sylvia, I see the wheels turning. What's going on over there? <laughs> no, no, no. I just think it's, there's just so much information and there's so much misinformation. And you're right yes. in the coaching, I've encountered people that have called themselves coaches. And when you ask them specific questions about, well, tell me more about the ego, tell me more about this, tell me more about that. And they're totally lost. Then you know that they're not trained by anybody. They're not really certified. And, but they're calling themselves coaches because that's the popular thing to do. And that's mm -hmm. the, the problem with the industry that we're in is that people won't, um, excuse themselves from a job because it's money left on the table, if you will. Uh, but the problem is you're not putting the, the, the clients or the patients um, needs up front and center. And that is a problem. That's an ethics problem um, that I Agreed. see a lot across the board. <clears throat> and it's also sales 101. If you want to make more sales, you better put that patient and that client's needs up front and center and it not be about yep. you making more money because you can tell right away when you're dealing with people that just don't, that's all they care about is to make the next sale versus mm -hmm. they're really interested in helping you gain those goals or gain that understanding as to why you're stuck in the circumstances that you find yourself in. So. Yeah, I agree. For me, it's about always bringing value. If you're always focused on the value you're bringing to your client, then you're going to do the right thing. And guess what? The money follows because people are tired of BS, right? People want you to be an authentic, good person. I really think that the world is hungry for that now. And so if you lead with being this authentic, good person, genuinely wanting to guide people, like you can't lose. There's just no, there's no losing road in that. So yeah, I totally agree. I was going to share. So I had a client, she's one of my consulting clients and I love like, you know, I love her. She loves me. Like we get along great. And, but she needed some done for you work. And I've been doing done with you work, like, you know, where she'll do work or have someone do it. And then I give her my opinion. And I was like, look, it's really going to speed it up. If you get some done for you work, like, why don't you not work with me the next few months because she's changing careers, right? And take this money and go, I'll help you find someone. And I did that and she's happy as a lark. And I hopped on a call with her today and she's like, I miss you so much. I was like, I know we'll work together again, but right now it's not right. Like your money's better spent here. And then my door is always open for you. And like, it just makes me happy to see her getting what she needs. And you know, guess what? She's going to send clients to me. She's going to come back and work with me. Am I not making money from her right now? No, but like I get to see the value and, and you know, the fruit of our work together being put, getting put in issue. You know, Sylvia, I'm coming to your 50th birthday party in a couple of months and I have another client launching a book. I'm going to her birthday party and launch party. Like, I think when you truly love your clients, like you get so much gratitude from them winning that all of this goes away. And, you know, my client, the same client I'm talking about, one of the people I introduced her to, I introduced her to a couple to do this done for you work. And she's like, they keep missing deadlines and they say they want to get to know me. And I just don't feel the enthusiasm. I'm like, Hey, look, it's your money. You put your money where you want it, right? Like you're not going to hurt my feelings. If they're not a great match for you, let's go back to the drawing board and figure out the best person for you. But, but I do think, you know, I hope if you're listening and you're looking to hire a coach, a therapist, a healer, a consultant, like it is your money and you get to choose. It's not just your money, but it's your time and energy, which sometimes are arguably more expensive, right? And if you feel you're not getting what you're worth, like speak up, like please speak up. So queen of boundaries, give us guidance on this because you know, thinking, well, that's not true. I, I hired an ad company that I just got out of the contract because I stepped out for the owner. I said, Hey, I want to talk to the owner. And I explained to her, you know, no results, no communication, no relationship. Like they were literally, and unfortunately I think they're a great company. I think it's just the project manager I had, we weren't a match. And, 
And the owner let me out of my contract. I mean, to her, you know, kudos. And I didn't even expect to get let out. I was just like, look, I'm not working with y'all anymore. I'll pay you the retainer monthly, but I'm not continuing this relationship. And here's why, you know, very factually. And of course, today everyone records meetings, which worked in my benefit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but <laughs> data, I mean, you know, what guidelines could you give? Because I, I have had a lot of clients come to me and they're skeptical and they're like, I've just worked with coaches and I've gotten burned. And Sylvia said she's experiencing it. You know, thank goodness I have an experience experienced it with a coach or a consultant per se, but you know, the marketing world, I've experienced it plenty. It's painful over there, what people promise you. So if someone's listening and they found themselves in the situation and they want to get out, like what guidance would you give them? Because it's really setting a boundary. Mm -hmm. Well, in April, you are very adept at being assertive and standing up for yourself and speaking your words. And there are a lot of people that are not this way. And mm -hmm. I've run into a lot of particularly females, unfortunately, but that we just mm -hmm. God's call it like I see it, that we females sometimes have a harder time speaking our mind because of people pleasing and wanting to be seen as yeah. kind and this this idea this narrative that if we if we stand up for ourselves if we speak our mind if we say this isn't okay this is not what i want then we're seen as hateful ugly rude fill in the blank mm -hmm. so with regard to boundaries what i tell a lot of my clients is that there's one person on this planet who's been given the responsibility of keeping you together just one and so if you're not doing it, it's not going to get done. It's nobody else's responsibility. And yep. so when we talk about, like I'll, I'll, in my coaching, I talk about yards, our yard versus our neighbor's yards. Like, who, you know, you're responsible for what's in your yard. Get out of your neighbor's yard. And so in our yard is our thoughts, feelings, and actions. And so if that's our responsibility, and if, if it's in disarray, if there's some things going on that we're not, you know, we paid for fertilizer, right? and they didn't deliver it correctly, then it's our job to say, hey, this isn't working. And mm -hmm. so it's our, that boundaries is twofold. Number one, it's making sure that we are responsible and we're taking care of what's going on in our yard, our yeah. thoughts, our feelings, our behavior, but also equally important, not owning what's in our neighbor's yard, their thoughts, their feelings, their actions. And so frequently we will not say anything because we're like, oh my gosh, if I say something, I'm going to hurt their feelings. They're going to mm -hmm. get mad at me, right? That's, those are your neighbor's feelings. Whether technically you can't hurt anybody's feelings because their feelings are in their brain. Okay. I just want to put that out there. And they get to choose how they feel. Yes. <laughs> That's it. They're going to respond how they're going to respond. So we have the right to say this isn't really working well. And something else I'll toss out really quickly is I teach my, my, my clients how to frame things in the affirmative. Like this is what I want. Instead of I don't like this, this is not working, I hate I this. Like Instead of saying that, say this is what I would really want and I, it's not really happening. So what can we do to make this happen? This is what I am seeking. This is what I do want. Mm -hmm. This is what I would like to achieve. Can we do this together? You know, it's what's happening so far isn't really meeting the goals, but is there something else we can do that will help me meet these goals and be very specific with those? And that way we can kind of go forward setting those boundaries and being very affirmative and positive with that. Yeah. No, I love that. I, I love the positive outlook. I always talk about the sandwich conversation and boundaries, which is very <laughs> simplified, but like tell them what you appreciate about them, give them your bullet points, and then end with here's our positive next steps, right? But I like it. You're keeping it positive all the way through because in the middle should really just be vocalizing how you feel and how you think and what you would like to see, right? Because you have no control over the other person. So I, I love that spin on it. Thank you so much for that. So we are sadly almost out of time. I hate that because this is such a great conversation, obviously. And, and to Dana's point, you have three strong women on here, but look, there have been times where we weren't this strong, right? I can promise you the reason I had that difficult conversation last week 
week was it violated a spiritual principle that I hold dear. And I like to say it's God, my soul, me, everyone else. So if you violate like God or my soul, that's a real easy one for me. Like I'm out. Yeah. So, you know, and, and to that point, choose your battles. Like we only have so much energy. Like where do you want to plant that stake? And where do you want to fight that battle? And where do you want to assert that boundary? But making make sure that not doing so is not harmful to yourself. And a lot of what I hear you saying, Dana, is in the on the spiritual side of things, and Sylvia will understand this. I, I call it standing in your dignity. And for women, it's incredibly important spiritually to stand in your dignity. And we have been socialized and trained not to. So we are. That's why you possibly need a therapist to unlearn behavior. You need a coach to set new habits. Maybe you need a spiritual healer because it's really deeply ingrained, right? Like, so there are all these things going on. And I think the important thing is as we wrap up, I just want to encourage everyone listening because the majority of our listeners are female, except for like my dad. My dad cracks me up. He's like, I learned so much about women listening to your <laughs> podcast. I was like, dad, he was like, your first three episodes, I learned more about women than I did my entire life. And he was 74. So. That's awesome. <laughs> it's so fun. So by the way, if you are a man listening, kudos, because you're learning about women, but anyway mm -hmm. you know just just encourage you to stand in your dignity and do the right thing because there is so much that we have to unlearn and you know it, it happens over a lifetime so if you're younger listening like this happens sylvia closing thoughts for us today or a parting message for our audience really there's so much help out there and there's no reason for us to be competing at all Let's all yes. be collaborators because mm -hmm. our spiritual gifts are very unique to us and we have a very special mm -hmm. imprint to make on this world and we need to step into that work fully and collaborate fully with each other because together we'll be unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Thank Absolutely. you so much. That's Dana, awesome. how about you? Oh my gosh. I th I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, you know, kudos to what Sylvia just said. It's just like, we've got to reach out and step into our space and own who we are. We, you know, looking at it from a spiritual standpoint, each one of us is on a path and yes. each one of us has experienced different traumas or we've gone through different trials, different tribulations for a reason. Each one mm -hmm. of these things has impacted us and we have come out on, on the other side with different coping strategies because of going through things for you know like I there's a, a lot of reasons April you know some of it about why I know what I know about boundaries yeah. and so each one of us is just owning that and stepping into that and trying to be a beacon trying to be salt and light in the world trying to be a the, you know that light on the hill for other mm -hmm. people that maybe are farther down the path than than mm -hmm. you know we've worked our way down We've gone through some things and we need to turn around and shine a light for those behind us. So mm -hmm. the ones that are going through the stuff that we've already been through, they can find their way because we're shining the light. I love it. And I'm going to piggyback off what you shared, Dana. By the way, if you want to hear Dana's story, please go listen to her episode. First of all, she's a freaking hoot. She's going to crack you up. And if you're an abundant <laughs> business woman, we have a live pin to the top. You will pick up all kinds of new phrases. But definitely go hear Dana's story. But what came up for me when she was sharing is I also went on a journey of learning boundaries. And mine might be less traumatic or dramatic, however you want to say it, than Dana's was right but that's still my story and it happened for a reason so do mm -hmm. not diminish your journey just because someone else's journey is tougher, right? Like, I thank God every day for what I call my easy pass life. I'm like, okay, God, thank you. This is my easy pass life, right? And and I joke, if you know, you know I had a 
ex-husband who's a cocaine addict like I've had my stuff but for some reason in this lifetime I was sent the coping skills where it seems easier right so I I like to joke it's my easy past life but it doesn't diminish the things I go through and so as you know if you're a listener I always say go forth with love how can you show up in more love today so I want to challenge you to go forth in love for your own story no matter how severe easy it etc. it is and go forth with love for other people's stories, right? It, we really are fascinating specimens, we human beings. And when you really listen to someone's story, you will fall in love with everyone you meet. So that's my challenge to you today. And I'm sure you've fallen in love with these two women. They are amazing <laughs> femme forces. So again, as always in the show notes, you can find how to follow Dana, how to follow Sylvia. There are past episodes with both of them so you can search for that if you'd like to hear more and thank you so much for joining us today if you're watching this on youtube i'd love for you to drop questions below because we might have a follow-up episode because i'd really like to go deeper in this topic so if you had a question we didn't touch on share it with us and we might do a replay you never know if you ask we listen so have a great day remember let's have each other's back show up in your truth and show up in love Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, ladies. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit VixenGathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.